Okay, here's the example from the previous video, and as promised, I'm going to simplify this. Let's get rid of our udder here, and we have cow with a moo count inside of it. And let me uh, let me scroll in here. It's a little bit bigger. I held down control and scrolled my right or my mouse wheel to make that zoom in. Let me draw the stack and heap again. In this video, I want to show you reference or no, not reference value types. Okay. And the differences are subtle, but can definitely cause some confusion if you're not paying attention. Let me F11 on this program, F11. Again, C is a reference. It sits on the stack, and it's going to reference this new cow. New as an operator, creates enough room out here for a cow. A cow is one integer big. So C will reference this cow out here uh, after I hit... F11 on the program, and that's the setup we have currently. Let me actually do something a little more interesting. I'm going to assign moo count to a value instead of just relying on the default, which is zero. Let's say C dot moo. Oh, I need to make it public. Public C dot moo count. Let's say this cow has been busy mooing and has mooed six mooed 600 and 54 times. So again, F11 here, F11, F11. We have this setup, but now we're assigning moo count, which defaults to zero. We're assigning it to 654. So the actual value 654 is stored out here in our cow, which has a single int, which makes up its entire uh, layout. All right now, I'm going to uh, change a few things here. Actually, just one thing. I'm going to change class to a struct. All right, and and when I say struct, that basically makes cow a value type instead of a reference type. Before we were dealing with reference types, where I have to reference this object down on the heap. But now that I made it a struct, instead it becomes a value type. All right, let me let me try to illustrate this. First of all, I need to let's just clear out our memory and start over again. All right, here's our stack. Here's our heap. Let's divide the two like so. And I'm going to hit F11 here and F11. And now when we say cow C, instead of going out to the heap, all right, C represents the cow. All right? C is not referencing a cow up out on the heap. C is the cow, the instance of the cow. And because it is the instance, it will go on the stack. All right? We reference its or we use its value directly, hence the term value type. Let me just draw it right here. Here's our cow. It is no longer a reference. All right. And when I come down here and hit F11 and say C dot moo count, well, it's zero. But when I say moo count gets 654, well, that will place the 654 inside of our cow, which our cow is sitting directly on the stack. All right. Now, hopefully that didn't burn or bend your brain too much. You're probably looking at this new and saying, hey, um, Jamie, uh, didn't you say new goes out to the heap and does stuff? Yeah, it does. It will create room out on the heap if you're dealing with a reference type. But I simply changed our class to a struct, and that one change alone says cow is now a value type. So then further, you might say, well, what does new mean as far as a cow goes? Well, it's actually kind of I don't know. I think it was confusing to me when I first picked up C sharp. But all new means is zero out the bits inside of this cow instance. All right? It's very confusing. It seems like, hey, go out on the heap and go create a new cow. But that's not what it says. It's saying, hey, I, I got a cow C here, and I need you to zero out the bits. All right? And I can actually prove this. Let me go here and just erase that and. Erase this. Let me let me take the new off here. In fact, actually, before I do the new, before I take the new off, I'm going to say console write line c dot move count. And I'm going to control f5. This just run this, and you can see 654 is displayed here. That's the value of move count. But if I if I comment out this this one line here, and I come here and I say, you know what? I'm not going to do the new cow thing anymore. I just give me the cow, and I'm just going to use it. Well, you see now we have a red squiggly here. What's the red squiggly reporting? I'm going to hover over it and it says, "Hey, um, there's a there's a chance that you're going to read from moo count, 
but you haven't actually assigned it. Right? Does that make sense? It's saying you're trying to read from a chunk of RAM that you haven't written to, and that doesn't make sense because you need to write something out there, at least put a zero, initialize it to something, because if we just go out there in RAM and we just take up whatever the bit values are and we use them as is, well, chances are your program's not going to behave accordingly or, or what you think it should be. So that's actually C-sharp guarding me and saying, hey, look, uh, if you want to use MooCount, that's fine, but you need to write a value out to it. Now, if I come back here and I say, okay, please zero out the bits, well, the red squiggly goes away saying, oh, okay, okay, we'll zero out all the bits that make up a cow. You can go ahead and read from them. Now, when I control F5 this, you can see, oh, it's zero. All right. Anyway, I know that that's probably a brain bender. It certainly took me off guard the first time I encountered this, but but just by changing that uh, class to a struct, you see that now C, instead of going out to the heap and new making a cow out here and then we reference it, none of that happens anymore. C, instead of being stored on the heap, it's stored directly on the stack, like so. Now some benefits of that. Well, one, we don't have to dereference to go out to the heap all the time, but some disadvantages is the stack has a lot less room. I know I've kind of drawn them equivalent in size here, but the heap is actually huge. Just tons of room out there. Lots bigger than the stack. The stack, it's, it depends on the executable and the definition set in there, but generally the stack will be one or two megs big, whereas the heap can be several megabytes large. So so generally, most of the objects we put out on the heap, whereas these value types, they go on the stack. Now, when do you want to make a value type versus a reference type? Well, I'll tell you what, 99-ish percent of the time, I'm making classes. All right, and the only time you really want to make a struct, struct is kind of like defining your own primitive. All right, remember in the previous videos I said, well, an int's a primitive, and a double's a primitive, and a bool's a primitive. They're basic building blocks types, just like two by fours and drywall and nails are to your home. Those are primitive um, pieces of hardware or uh, materials that you use to develop your home. Well, same thing here. We, we're, it's almost like we're trying to create our own nail. All right. Now, last time I looked at a cow, a cow is made up of an udder and organs and several stomachs and hair, and it's 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 way beyond being anything primitive. All right. So a, a cow class is not a good candidate to be a struct. So what kind of class would be a good candidate to be a struct or a value type? Well, uh, what if we wanted to do a fraction type? All right, we, we say int here, okay, int i gets 5, but what if I wanted to make a fraction, and hopefully you're familiar with fractions, but I say fraction, my fraction, my fraction gets new fraction, and say, oh, sorry, let me, let me clear all this off here, new fraction, all right, and let's say we wanted to do 3 fourths, so I would say 3 fourths, like so, if, Hopefully you're familiar with your fractions. 3 divided by 4, that's a fraction there. And you can think of it as it's almost a number. It's almost a primitive. It's very small. It's storing a top value and a bottom value. And they're integer values. And so it's close to being a primitive. It's, it's, it's a lot closer to being a primitive than it is being a class. And chances are I'll, I will create several fractions and use them lots and lots and lots, just like I use integers, or maybe not that much, but almost as much. And so those are very small uh, classes that I don't, I, I, I think, make sense to make a value type. All right. Now, as far as our cow goes, our cow actually stored one in. So if our cow only stored an in, yeah, it probably makes sense to make cow be a value type by saying it's a struct. But like I said before, a cow could get very involved, you know, int, num, stomachs, and who, other, who who knows what else, but it would get very large and lots of data members. And this this is not close to being a primitive. All right, whereas a fraction, here, let's do it, struct, fraction, all right, we have int numerator and int denominator, denominator. And certainly we would define operations that would work as far as, or be well defined as far as a fraction goes, but that's it as far as fraction is. There's two ints, and oh, that's almost as close to being a primitive as it gets, so I think in that case it does make sense to keep fraction a struct or a value type and almost a primitive. Anyway, 
there you go C sharp value types we're going to explore much more about these in the next future videos